right, Tim Rogers reporting with the Farm News Media Team. Today we're in Sanilac County near Deckerville with Tom McConaughey with the McConaughey family. Um, Tom, thanks for letting me ride along with you today. You're welcome. So, so Tom, tell us a little bit about your family farm and who's all involved. Well, my family farm involves four partners, being my two brothers and myself and my dad. Uh, we are a sixth generation farm. And uh, we farm about 4,000 acres, uh, dry beans, sugar beets, corn, and wheat. Okay. Um, and, uh, you just told me uh, you had a new, uh, new little one at home. T tell me uh, how many kids do you have? I have four. <laughs> okay. And uh, how many months old? The, the, ba one? the baby's two months old. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Everything going well with that? Very well, yes. Uh, healthy, happy, and finally got that girl. So, very, going very well. <laughs> Good deal. Congratulations. Um, so, we're obviously combining uh, dry beans up here uh, in the Thumb of Michigan. Um, tell me a little bit about the combine that, uh, that you guys are using to harvest the beans. This is a John Deere S670. Uh, it's using the same or a very similar rotor system that John Deere's had out for quite a few years now. I love the system. I'm familiar with it. It does a great job. You know, it, making adjustments on the go are, are easy. I'm just very happy with it. It's a very, very reliable combine. This combine covers a lot of acres every year and I have very little downtime. Awesome. Uh, what year did you guys purchase, purchase the combine? This one is a 2015. Okay. So going into the fourth season or third season? This would be the fourth. Fourth, okay. Yes. And talk a little bit about the head that you got this thing equipped with. Uh, the head, I believe, is a year or two, maybe two years newer. It's a 35 foot flex head. Okay. Um, I'm also very happy with the flex head. Uh, I would like to have a draper head, but we just haven't uh, haven't brought ourselves to spend the money on the draper head yet. Uh, okay. In the next few years, we might have one. I think they're a great header, uh, but this flex head does what I need it to do, and is considerably cheaper. So we're we're running it. Good deal. So this is the first field of the of the harvest for the dry beans in Michigan here for you guys. For us, yes. What's a what's an average yield? Uh, for, for dry beans. What are you guys hoping to, to hit? Well, you know, a, a lot of guys, you know, in dry beans, if you've got 25 baked beans, you're doing pretty good. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, of course, 30 baked beans is better, right? Yep. <laughs> uh, I believe my average over the last few years is 28. 29 right in there that's over the last three years so I think we've been kind of spoiled these these bean varieties today are, are good varieties they yield well um, we haven't had a major mold issue in the last few years our our averages our yield averages just been really good um, so where do these beans end up where do they uh, where do you guys take them these beans go to Bayside Best Beans in Seabowain. Okay. And from there, there they're processed, they're marketed, and they they ship them all over the world. It used to be, you know, a lot of them went to Mexico. Today, it's a lot more spread out. If any of these dry beans are ending up on your table, it's probably through a company like Bush's uh, Baked Beans. But, you know, you go into Mexico, beans are a lot more an everyday meal than they are here. And I think it's like that in a lot of other countries too, where we don't have beans very often here for you know a meal, but they're ate a lot more, you know, in other countries as... So the consumption of beans are higher than, than other countries in the US? Yeah. Huh, and I, I kind of learned that from being in Bayside and and with Bayside, I was on the board there for a few years, and I, I got to go to the uh, the Bean Congress in Cancun 
Ah, uh, shoot, that was seven or eight years ago, and I learned a lot there. It was very interesting to go and do. Awesome. So some of the stuff you learned at the conference, you can bring back and implement to your farm? And yeah, and, yeah, you know, kind of looking for what the, the end users are looking for, and if we can produce that, then, uh, then you have a better chance of selling them at maybe a, a little bit better price or just being able to sell more beans. Um, another thing I kind of learned through that was a lot of dry beans are grown in the Mindac area, which would be like the Minnesota, Dakota areas. Okay. And they don't get the weather that we get here. They don't have the climate there that we have here. And so end users are really like a Michigan dry bean because it has just the quality of the bean is better. I, don't, I think because of the moisture that we, we get, um, I can't really explain that completely to you, but no, we have, we have I, the perfect climate for we, it. Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. Okay. So, do you guys grow any white beans, or is everything uh, black beans? Dry bean. We grow blacks and reds right now. Okay. Uh, we grow, we grow what, red beans. What determines that? The market for it that you're that you're kind of watching, or? Yes, mostly the market. Uh, you know, a, a navy bean. A navy bean will yield about the same as a black bean, and it typically the price is close to a black bean. You know, it might be off a dollar or two a bag, um, but a black bean just seems easier as far as growing a quality crop. You know, if, in a navy bean or a white bean, if the, if there's a, a skin issue on that bean or something wrong with it, it's much easier to see on a white bean. Exactly than a black bean. Black beans just seem to be more, you know, durable to the weather and so a little less you, risky. Have you had any, uh, any disease or any issues with the beans that you've had to combat this year? This year, well, this year was just weather. It was such a wet spring. Yep. Uh, we've never planted beans in such wet conditions before. I mean, we call them dry beans. <laughs> It's usually hot and dry when we're planting them, yep. and it's usually hot and dry when we're combining them. And so what is that ideal time that you're planting? I, I know this year everything got in late, but what, what's the ideal time to get dry beans planted? Well, if we could plant all of our dry beans on the same day here, it'd be about June 10th. Okay. And then um, I, the ideal harvest is what? Second, you know, late September. Okay. Um, these beans here, we got in pretty early and you know we had a lot of planting to do and it was it had been wet so we planted these and look I'm, I'm glad we did because looking back now we've got I don't think we planted anything there's this field and across the road we didn't plant anything for about two weeks after that oh, Wow. so it was just wet and it got to a point uh, it got into July we took some we, we didn't plant all of our dry beans this year. We took some prevented plant acres and uh, never did finish up because, you know, you get into that first week of July. So if you don't deliver on, so if you had certain amount uh, contract for the year, um, how do you get out of those contracts? So say you said you took some prevented plant, um, you have to pay a penalty on not, not planting a certain amount? Well, it depends on the contract. Most contracts, will have an, what they call an act of God in them. Okay. Which so is if, weather. yeah, if, if you have a weather related issue or, you know, white mold wipes out most of your beans, uh, you can usually get out of those contracts, but there are some straight bag contracts that you, you need to supply the beans that you contracted, or you, you probably have to buy some beans to replace what you didn't produce. So you, you just be really careful about that when you're contracting. You know, don't, we typically don't contract more than about 50% of what we expect to grow. Yep. In that way, you know, you don't, you don't over contract because you, you can get into a pickle there and get yourself in trouble if, you, if you're not careful about it. We've had John Deere combines for as long as I can remember. I, I grew up riding an 8820 with my Uncle Dave and Oh, yeah. Just loved it. Um, since I've been old enough to run a combine, it's been all rotor combines and, and very similar setup from you know ten years ago to, to now. The rotors are very similar. 
the combines and controls and options and everything are very, uh, very advanced from what they were 10 years ago. But uh, the rotor is very similar, and, and we love it. Um, it does all the crops that we need it to do. It does a great job. We can make adjustments on the fly easily, and uh, they're very, very reliable. I have very little downtime with this combine. That's awesome. Uh, you know, when you do have downtime, uh, who do you guys call for service? I call Chi County, and they're they've been good about getting somebody out and getting our our problems solved as quick as they can.